The seven Harry Potter books hold many incredible moments, some happy, some sad, and some satisfying. I went through the entire series and picked out the 10 most satisfying moments the franchise had to offer. These are moments that made you feel good inside, the moments that made you say, hell yeah, or you had that coming. Just to be clear, this video is based on moments from the books, not the movies, but to make the video more visually pleasing for you guys, I'm going to use clips from the movies as visuals. If you enjoy this video, hit that like button. It will greatly help the channel with the algorithm. And if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button, and you can also follow me on all of my other social medias, all of which are linked down below, and all of which house similar content that I make here on this channel. Before we start, I want to thank today's sponsor, Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription that lets you choose a new designer fragrance every month for just $17. This makes it so you don't have to invest a lot of money on designer fragrances, because Scentbird offers unisex options for brands like Gucci, Prada, and Versace, as well as some indie labels like Skylar, Heretic, and Confessions of Rebel. With each fragrance, you'll get a 30-day supply, so you can try out the fragrances before committing to a full-size bottle that can be pretty pricey. This month, I got scents from Zier Icon, Avant, and Sense of Wood. Avant was my favorite for this month. It was made with orange blossom, jasmine, vanilla, and a few other special ingredients as well. I wore it a few days this week, and I actually got a few compliments about it. Today, I can give you guys a discount of 55% off if you use my code FLAME. It's just a little over $7 for your first month, which is a great deal for a great subscription available in the US and Canada. Thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Check out the links below guys, you won't be disappointed. Now that I've said that, let's get into it. As the number 10 most satisfying moment in Harry Potter, I have Harry blowing up Aunt Marge into a big ball. In the book, Marge was there for an entire week and she tormented Harry for her whole stay. She insulted him as well as his parents. What is it the boy's father did for Junior? Nothing. He, did, he didn't work. He was, he was unemployed. And a drunk too, no doubt. Just as she was about to go in on Harry for saying that his parents didn't actually die in a car crash, she swelled with anger and then literally swelled as she blew up into a giant ball. I know I said I was basing this on the books and not the movies, but the movie having her actually float away into the sky was absolutely hilarious. Number 9. Gryffindor winning the House Cup in Book 1. After the Gryffindor's chances for the House Cup looked hopeless in the back half of the book, courtesy of Harry and friends losing 150 points for being out of bed at night, they got the ultimate redemption. Everybody went from hating them for making them lose, to making them the most important Gryffindors at Hogwarts for securing the points to win. And this was even better because Dumbledore literally announced that Slytherin won. And in first place, with 472 points, Slytherin house. Only to take that away from them and give it to their rival house. There was definitely some favoritism in there, especially when you remember that Dumbledore was part of Gryffindor house during his time at Hogwarts, but it's okay because it led to a very satisfying moment. At number eight, I have the moment when Draco was turned into a ferret. This moment was satisfying even before the transfiguration, as Harry gets Malfoy back for insulting Mrs. Weasley's weight. He says, you know your mother Malfoy? That expression she's got like she's got dung under her nose? Has she always looked like that or was it just because you were with her? This was what made Malfoy try and curse Harry with his back turned, only to have the fake Moody turn him into a ferret and fling him all around. I'm with Ron on this one. Give me a moment, because I want to fix that in my memory forever. Draco Malfoy, the amazing bouncing ferret. Number 7, Gryffindor winning the Quidditch Cup in Book 3. This was three books in the making, and many more years in the making for some of the older players, as well as Professor McGonagall, who was crying tears of joy when they won. It was so fitting too that Wood finally got a championship in his final year of being captain. This moment was even more satisfying too because Harry beat who else but Draco Malfoy to the snitch even though Draco had a huge head start. When all seven of the Gryffindor players came together to celebrate this championship win, it was such a satisfying moment. At number 6, I have Cornelius Fudge's Karma. After Minister of Magic Cornelius Fudge publicly called Harry a liar, questioned his sanity, slandered him as well as Dumbledore for months, and sent the most vile woman to teach Harry at Hogwarts, it's safe to say that Fudge got the karma he deserved. He had assured the Wizarding World that Voldemort was not back as recently as a few days before telling the world that he really was back. He's back. Fudge's line to the Muggle Prime Minister is what really made this be as high on the list as it is though. My dear Prime Minister, you can't honestly think I'm still Minister of Magic after all this. I was sacked three days ago. The whole wizarding community has been screaming for my resignation for a fortnight. 
I've never known them so united in my whole term of office. So freaking satisfying. At number 5, I have the Order of the Phoenix intimidating the Dursleys. Remus Lupin, Arthur Weasley, Nymphadora Tonks, Mad-Eye Moody, and even Hermione Granger all approached the Dursleys at King's Cross when they were there to pick Harry up. I'm not sure why all three Dursleys went there to pick Harry up, almost like a greeting party when they despised him. That's not normally something you do for someone you don't like. But anyway, the Order members along with Hermione all threatened the Dursleys, saying that if Harry was at all mistreated that summer, the Dursleys would have to deal with them. Vernon asked Mad-Eye if he was threatening him, and Moody shamelessly said, yes, I am. Vernon responded by asking if he looked like the kind of man that could be intimidated, and Moody lifted the hat he was wearing to reveal his magical eye. This made Vernon jump backwards, and Mad-Eye savagely said, yes, I'd have to say you do, Dursley. This is such a satisfying moment after the Dursleys, and especially Vernon, had put Harry through so much over the years. At number 4, I'm putting Umbridge being taken away by the Centaurs. If you look at the movie instead of the book, this might have been even higher on the list solely because of Harry using Umbridge's own line against her. Tell them I need them! I'm sorry, Professor. I must not tell lies. But in the book, that line was never said. Even so, this was still a very satisfying moment as Umbridge defined the meaning of around and find out. She had been cruel to so many people in her life and of course to Harry and all of the students that year. No one checked her until she messed with the wrong group of people, or in this case, centaurs. After insulting their intelligence and calling them half-breeds, which is the equivalent of a racial slur, they captured her and they intended to kill her. However, Dumbledore intervened and saved her. She was still in shock though, doing nothing in the hospital wing but looking up at the ceiling. She also had PTSD from this event, as evidenced by Ron making clip-clopping noises, which made her sit bolt upright absolutely terrified. After she caused so much damage that year at Hogwarts, it was definitely satisfying to see her get what she deserved. Number 3, Dobby being freed. Throughout the whole second book, we had heard how terrible Dobby's owners were to him. They beat him, they punished him, and they made his life miserable. That's why it was so satisfying to not only see Dobby get freed, but also to watch Lucius lose his house elf courtesy of a 12 year old who outsmarted him. You lost me, my servant! Then the cherry on top was seeing Dobby, a creature who Lucius always thought was beneath him, knocking him off his feet and overpowering him. It was a very satisfying moment. At number 2, I'm putting Fred and George's exit from Hogwarts. This was not only one of the most epic moments in the entire series, but it was probably the moment that made me say, hell yeah, more than anything else. The twins used their joke products to torment Umbridge and Filch, and they even got the other professors on their side, all of them acting as though they didn't know how to clean this stuff up, when really they did. When it came to the end of this showdown, Umbridge was so confident and was so sure she could stop the twins. However, she underestimated them, and they humiliated her, refusing to listen, sending fireworks everywhere, and telling Peeves the Poltergeist to give her hell for them now that they were leaving. With those final words, words that kept Peeves tormenting Umbridge for the rest of her time at Hogwarts, they left the school promoting their new joke shop, which went on to become a huge success in large part to the stunt they pulled here. And finally, number one, I have Harry humiliating Voldemort in their final showdown. Are you seeing a theme of humiliation here? I guess those lead to the most satisfying moments, at least in my opinion. This moment was very different from the book than it was in the film, and I think it was much more satisfying in the book. Harry did not reveal himself to everyone right away like he did in the movie. Instead, he waited until no one was looking to put the invisibility cloak on. He then made his way to the Great Hall where the battle was still going on, everyone still thinking that he was dead. Then Harry ripped the cloak off to the shock of everyone, and he absolutely humiliated Voldemort with a whole crowd watching. Harry explains how Voldemort's own actions made him lose, referring to Voldemort using Harry's blood, thus keeping Lily's protection of Harry alive. Voldemort tried to recover, saying that he orchestrated Dumbledore's death, only for Harry to say that Dumbledore planned his own death and made Voldemort think that he did it. Harry then tells Voldemort how he was too dumb to see that one of his most loyal followers, Severus Snape, was really working for Dumbledore the whole time. And on top of that, he tells Voldemort that the Elder Wand, the all-powerful wand that he's currently using, actually belongs to him, Harry, and it won't kill him because of that. And you have to remember that unlike in the movie, this was all set in front of a huge crowd, and it would be written down in history books for generations to come. Voldemort then died from his own killing curse, this time permanently, having no more Horcruxes left. 
This, in my opinion, is the most satisfying moment in the entire Harry Potter series. That's my opinion though. Comment below and tell me what your most satisfying moments are. I'm excited to read your thoughts. I want to again thank Scentbird for sponsoring this video. If you use my links down below, you get a 55% discount on the first month using my discount code FLAME. That's all I have for you guys this week though, so I will see you in the next video.